Hello, good morning to you all. Welcome to Sunrise Today Today. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Okay, well, he's not alone, mm -hmm. <laughs> just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Sometimes the director changes style. Good morning and welcome this beautiful Thursday morning. I'm Malfoy Okun Yusuf. And I'm still in uh, my camp here in Abuja. Uh, and happy camp. <laughs> <laughs> good morning and welcome. I'm Ayo Makinde. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, my know is on Friday yet, but you know, sometimes... It feels like you're right. You can come already. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, Chamberlain is feeling what Malcolm feels you know, this morning. You know? In terms of the... You, you really do in terms have of, your uh, friends, Malcolm. You know, you know what I mean? Saying, Be careful around me. <laughs> <laughs> when your pocket swells up, that's how you feel. <laughs> I like the sound of that, Chamberlain. That's what's up. And you know I'm right beside you, so maybe mm -hmm. I get a share in that. <laughs> well, I'm still in camp here, so... And I, and I said, happy camping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you heard what you heard. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to Tara uh, Ibile and camp, continue your campaign as well. It's not a bad place <laughs> if you. They're even helping you by telling, hey, look, I, they're pointing you somewhere. So make your pick. Well, I'll be honest. Take with your you. pick. This, 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 this is a good view. This is oh, a good view. I like view. the boat on it. Yeah, I like this. That. Is a good view. And all I all I see again, guys. I'm sorry. I see a movie, right? Yeah, I see that movie again. I mean, just imagine some country. Where did they shoot all those um, um, historical movies, epic movies in Nigeria? This is just mm. one of those places that you want to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a really, really lovely, lovely place. Beautiful, Look. serene. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that, like yesterday, we were talking about Kano. <laughs> <laughs> and we were looking at the infrastructure there and it looks like not a lot of people were happy with our you know, we're happy well they saw what we saw. Yeah. Um and you know the idea behind this is to actually show off the beauty of our country. Absolutely. And sometimes in the process of showing it off you find that um, actually there are some small defects which we can, actually do, <laughs> we can do something about. But the beauty of actually mm -hmm. looking at things in nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nature is always perfect. Uh like it or yes, even in the rainy season or in the dry season, there will always be a thing of beauty about something that just occurs in nature. Yeah. Uh, and I think that this is one of it. You talked about movies. I, in recent times, I have seen some very beautiful movies produced in Nigeria. Our producers and movie makers yeah, are doing amazing things. I mean, only recently uh, we saw House of Ga directed and done by Bolanli Austin Peters. Uh, we saw what happened at the last AMBCA. Uh, Breath of Life. I had to go and watch that movie afterwards and I yes. realized I was wondering where I, I went online to look for where did they shoot it? <laughs> where in Nigeria is this? And it's really really beautiful to note that a lot of it was done in Ibadan, Ibadan which we like to yab a lot. <laughs> uh, the people of Ibadan actually have some beauty to offer this mm -hmm. country. So so as, an, as is in Ibadan, so it is in Taraba and you're looking at E.B. Lake in Taraba local gov I'm sorry, in Taraba state. It's such a sad thing, though, that insecurity continues to, you know, uh, prevent us from being able to maximize the potential of this country. A few days ago, very sadly, we heard that five people, or is it four people, were shot on their way, I, I think, around Takum local government area of, of uh, Taraba state. Now, yeah. if you hear stories like that, it doesn't help uh, it doesn't help, Any even though yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. help investors because they always have to think about how they will keep the security up. I think it has a challenge mm -hmm. to the state government, who has also tried to, you know, bring about the tourism potentials of EB. We saw what happened. I can't remember. Was it a fishing festival that they did there? Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think it's something that happens once a year. I while they're putting that up, they also need to work very hard and assiduously. In trying to bring down incidences that will prevent people Malfoy, from exploring it's, it's not, this it's not, um, it's not rocket science, as you, you would usually say sometimes. It's not rocket science. You know what happened in the days of uh, Olagunse in Lola and Rajirasaki in Lagos State. The place was literally overrun by hoodlums and armed robbers and the rest of it. And then another governor came and put paid to all of it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the benefits of it we're still you know enjoying today in the state so it's not rocket science anyone that's why i always ask do we know the job description of anyone who wants to vie for a particular office the job description includes security mm -hmm. well, so there is no excuse 
to anyone. You took the job, you asked for the job, you got the job, you campaigned for the job, you interviewed for the job, literally. I'm talking about campaigns, Kimberling. Have you seen what's going on? Oh, yeah. So, speaking about governors too, guys, yeah. and job description, mm. how about this one in Benue? They're supposed to be happening today, Thursday, a party meeting in Benway State. Mm. But the governor had a press conference last night saying, listen, as the governor of the state and the party leader is unaware of any of such things. And so he made a broadcast and said, whatever meeting that they plan to hold is now void." So what then happens? Will they go ahead and hold the meeting because it, there's been security all over the place to see what goes next? But here now is what he said. And of course you wonder. How will the other members of the party who are supposed to meet today, what will happen? It's supposed to be 10 a.m., I think. So what happens then after this? Well, let's, let's, let's listen. listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, the citizenry, could not participate in the, um, in the nationwide protests. And they had very genuine, legitimate reasons as to why they had no need to do that. I've been reading in the newspapers that it's going to be um, a party, an APC party meeting here in Benue. Um, the last time I checked, I'm the APC leader in the state, and if I'm not aware of any meeting happening, um, then that meeting is not welcome at all. Um, I don't want to preempt... Uh, what whoever what? arranged for that kind of a meeting, but it's important that um, even the organizers of the so-called APC meeting in the state, without the knowledge of the leader, uh, cannot simply hold. So let it be on the record that that meeting is called off. Whoever is invited or whoever intends being present at that meeting um, there's no caucus meeting, there's no meeting of APC in Benue at, uh, at all tomorrow. Uh, let me quickly thank all the supporters of the APC, um, the fact that the former heads of states, former presidents, um, and all the governors, you know, gave a vote of confidence on the president means the president is truly trying. He is. He is. Um, and those of us who are giving him 100% support uh, would not want to play with that, um, uh, with the opportunity we have to serve the people and serve them very judiciously and legitimately. Okay, so <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> what is going on? You heard what you heard. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Look, it wasn't, and that's why it's very important to listen because mm. uh, words are not just, he was very intentional with the words that he used. It wasn't that is, he's not just aware of the meeting, he said that the meeting is not welcome. In other words, and he also said the meeting cannot hold. The meeting is called off. So it's not just a question of, I'm not aware. In other words, if you want to that's hold your meeting, go, <laughs> go and hold your meeting. I mean, that's not my problem. I'm not aware. I'm not coming. That's not what he's saying. Wow. He's saying that the meeting is not welcome. The meeting cannot hold. Um, and the meeting is hereby called off. Okay, so I'm asking my head, how do you call off a meeting you didn't call? <laughs> um, you remember what Mr. Falano <laughs> said? Are, are you going to join the protest? How can I join the protest that I don't know the organizers? <laughs> so, how can you call off a meeting you didn't call or you didn't organize? That's on the one hand. Secondly, I I don't know, but I I I don't think it's to, like totally unaware that totally that he's not aware. Mm -hmm. Maybe just that some people didn't consider the governor. Um, important and also to speak. I think that for our viewers who are wondering where this is coming from, yeah. for those who have been watching the politics in Benway State, they know that the governor, and I don't want to, I don't know whether to use the term godfather, but it seemed that they had that relationship in Benway. Uh, the current SGF of the Federation, who was a former governor of the state as well, 
you know, was very uh, instrumental in bringing about the candidacy of the governor, you know, and his eventual emergence as governor of Benue State. Uh, they've since fallen out. And it does appear that there is a battle for supremacy in Benue, where you, the governor has said he's the leader of the party of the APC. But sometimes that is always in contention as to whether a governor is the leader of the party or, or the party somebody, chairman. yes, or the, not or the party you chairman, a or if you have political exactly officer. someone of the SGF state status in the state who has been in politics for quite a while, you know, there's always that battle, which is what we're seeing playing out in um, Benue State, and we've also seen play out in River State as to who exactly should be responsible or who exactly should hold the party structure. The governor is certainly not a, forget the fact that he is a reverend father. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> he is once, not, you, once you're a politician, something else comes in. Yes, he's playing, his, he's playing yeah. his cards on this one and he's certainly not taking this battle, sitting down. And basically, that is what is playing out here. And I think that if this meeting, I, I sincerely hope that it doesn't become violent if they decide that they want to go ahead and host the meeting. Because uh, as you said, how can you call off a meeting and you did not convene? How can you say you're not aware of something and then you now say the meeting is not welcome? You say it cannot hold. You say it is hereby called off. So see, the, these, are the, these are the key takeaways that, you know, I think those who are planning to organize the meeting should be aware of. And I think it will be, uh, it will be in order that we also keep tabs mm -hmm. on what happens in many. I think you can count on us to do that for you Absolutely. today, you know, to see whether that meeting eventually holds and what the reaction of the people who had the planned people, the meeting. Yeah. The people. The people. I'm not even talking about the politicians now who organized the meeting. The, the people of, you know, Benway State, those are always a very important you know, element in all of these conversations. And mm -hmm. for me, you know, something that you mentioned that you analyzed quite very, very, very well is the fact that this is, the, the, this is all politics of individuals, mm. not party politics, if you ask me. Because we've always been talking about this. Politics of individuals is what there's, 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 I'm coming party somewhere. Politics. I'm coming somewhere. Okay. When I say party, politics of individuals uh -huh. and not politics of the party is... Who determines who is the leader of the party? Mm. In the mm. Second Republic, the national part chairman of the party is the leader of the party. The president is the employee of the party. The chairman in the states is supposed to be the leader of the party. Where do we, the people, but come in? This is the Fourth Republic. <laughs> <laughs> well, since, well, that was well, toggled, since that there that was, it. was toggled <laughs> in the first term mm -hmm. of the first president mm -hmm. in this fourth republic. Mm -hmm. And it is not something that is unknown to us. So if it worked with us for us before, in the third republic, remember, uh, King Gibe and uh, Tommy Kibe were very, very prominent in the third republic. Okay. So, well, Ayo, if you go on like this, we won't take the papers from this republic. <laughs> So please, let's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's have the paper review. <laughs> the must be paid package of senators is still very much in the news. Look at the front page of the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Confusion triggers fresh debate over senators' pay package. Ramfak serving ex-senators, quote, different figures. I earn 21 million naira monthly, Senator Samaila. Apabio undermines Ramfak in fixing salaries and allowances, according to Atiku. Seven senator earns 31 million naira monthly. I got 13 million naira monthly during my time. That's from Shehu Sani. The details of that on the inside pages. A similar story on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. Senator's monthly pay hits 2 billion naira. Each senator gets 21 million naira per month as running cost. That's from Kao Sumaila. Principal officer's package still unknown. Adjust your earnings, given masses realities. That's from Serap, Yaga, and Critchett. Find the details of that story on the inside pages of the paper. The front page of the Vanguard News Super has hurdles ahead of CNG vehicles rollout. That's from investigations. Local mechanics, technicians at sea with technology. Users still unsure of safety. Massive awareness and training lacking. That story is on page 30. Front page of the Guardian newspaper, Southwest. 39 dams moribund over poor maintenance, obsolete equipment. Details of that story on the inside pages, and of course, you can see some infographic on the front page. Nigeria News Direct, counter subversion bill. Rep speaker bows to pressure, withdraws draft legislation. That story you'll find on page four of the paper. 
The Daily Independent has a similar story. Rep Speaker withdraws bill to criminalize free speech others. Legal experts charge National Assembly on inclusive approach to lawmaking. The details of that story on the inside pages. New Telegraph, ACF to FG. Don't ignore reasons for hardship protests. The story you'll find on several pages of the paper this morning. And look at the writers. Once it'll be grave mistake. Hoodlums stole Ganduja's corruption case documents from courts as from Colonel Governor ODM. Manufacturers recorded high inventory of unsold goods during protests. Tinubu should re-examine his economic reform policies as from Getso. Council of State's confidence in Tinubu improper. That's from Professor Udenta. Find the details of that story on the inside pages. This Nigeria newspaper, Ganduja's corruption case file stolen, says Yusuf. What does that mean? Aftermath of court invasion by protesters, court, governors, can a governor assesses damage reveals over 1 billion naira loss. Flip the pages for more details. The Blueprint newspaper has this one. The bottom of the page to arrest hunger, LG rolls out guidelines on zero duty for food items. Says company must be Nigeria Incorporated, operational, paid taxes for five years. Those importing maize, wheat, or beans must be agricultural companies. That's from NCS. Temporary measures not to undermine long-term strategies. Who said that? The details you'll find on the front page continues on the inside pages. The leadership newspaper has amid food inflation, and I think this is serious, Nigeria risks generation of children with low IQ. That story is on page four, but look at the infographic on the front page for some insight. The front page of Business Day newspaper has airlines turn to local repair firms on FX scarcity. Well, the details of that story is on the front page, continues on the inside pages, and you must truly wonder what that means. And these are some of the papers we have for you this morning. Welcome back. So uh, some of the standout scenarios in that is that uh, controversial counter subversion bill. So that's a big one. But as you also have heard, the Speaker, Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, has withdrawn that counter subversion bill. So it says that decision follows public reactions to the bill, which seeks to criminalize Subversive activities by associations, organizations, militias, cults, bandits, and other proscribed groups in Nigeria. So he put up a statement yesterday in this regard. So that's part of what we're going to be discussing this morning. So we'll take a further look at that slide, don't worry. But here we've got Honorable Philip Agbese. He is the Deputy Chairman House Committee on Information. Um, we'll come to you in just a moment. So uh, thank you for coming. Out. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Yes, as I did tell you, that uh, Honorable Philip Agbasa, he's here with us. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. It's a pleasure. So before we get into this bill, quickly, we, we heard the governor's press conference about uh, the meetings in Benway. Uh, there was supposed to be a meeting this morning, but uh, what's going on? Is there, are you going to attend any meeting there seems to be a lot of confusion about what's happening. <laughs> well, I thought um, I was here. I thought so too. Uh, but... <laughs> on a very serious uh, issue. Uh, but since you've asked, I think uh, it is good that I say something about that. Um, the state chairman of the party, uh, Comrade Osin Agada, had fixed a meeting for today. And uh, you know you cannot be governor and state chairman at the same time. But His Excellency for the earlier is still missing a point, probably because of his background and where he's coming from. He feels that he can, you know, be governor at the same time with the state chairman and another point, every other thing together. But I think uh, uh, Comrade Osinagada has called off that meeting. I'm not aware if he has addressed any press conference at the moment, but if he has, uh, because he has this uh, that happened NGO. Last night. Last night, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has this NGO which is using you know, to just oppose as uh, an organ Who? of the party. 
I mean, I mean, I mean uh, His Excellency, uh, oh. Father, earlier. Uh, but I, I, I think just by the way, so maybe another time I will okay. get to discuss so, that. So, let's get to this bill. What in the world was going on? Why was it introduced in the first place? Because the wordings, when people saw it, they thought, yeah, people actually sat down, thought about this, drafted it. It became a bill. They're about to present it until, according to the statement, the reactions that came through, then the speaker pulled back. Yes, um, we cannot shy away from the fact that, yes, as beautiful as our democracy is as a country, we've also had some elements, non-state actors who have taken advantage of the law, you know, of f certain freedoms as encapsulated in our books, you know, to carry out activities that tend to undermine the Nigerian state. Uh, the bill was not actually intended, you know, like uh, it was rightly, you know, put together, wedded, you know, to uh, serve as an instrument to cage the citizens. It is actually in the interest. Nevertheless, uh, a man uh, wakes up in the morning to a woman wakes up in the morning to prepare food for the children, and they say, today we're not hungry. We don't want any food. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, in his wisdom, has done the needful. So this was supposed to be food. Gone. Okay, let's take a look at some of the wordings of this bill uh, and see, you said that uh, it, it was well intended. So let's yes. see if we could get some uh, insights mm. or understanding mm. in terms of the intendment of the bill, some of the objectives there, if you could just focus on that uh, a little closer so that uh, you can also, I mean, you're in the house, you should have seen this bill. So if you look at this provision, guys, does this um, uh, look at the objectives, provide for a legal and institutional framework to detect, prevent, investigate, criminalize, prosecute and sanction subversive and related activities and B, regulate the procedure and determine the manner in which the provisions of this act shall be carried out. But there are some penalties which were also highlighted. Very, uh, they thought it was rather given. But looking at the intent of this bill, some thought this was clearly going to strangulate people who have several freedom of expression, like association, and this was really not going to definitely all go well for the country. No, you, you see... Um we have taken time to look at the criticism or the comments that followed the introduction of this bill. And um, even if we want to uh, step aside the fact that His Excellency Mr. Speaker has withdrawn the bill, you know... Hope is not going to be introduced at a later date. No, it is at the discretion of the, the, of the sponsor of the bill. Uh, yeah, because in a democracy, for instance, some of the comments that have been passed, uh, some persons have uh, said um, the aspect that deals with people's freedom, in that's free uh, people's freedom, legitimate citizens who intend to go about their businesses and livelihood the way it should be done in a democratic setting should utterly not have any fear. Of course, our democracy is a product of free speech. If people are not allowed to make contribution, and the tenth House of Representatives under the leadership of Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, you know, we operate an open parliament, and we have continued to encourage Nigerians to come forward with their suggestions and input. Mm. Some other persons are equally yes. talking about timing. Yeah, if you look at you, the criticism, some people are this. talking about the timing. Look some at people this are for saying Let that, us explain this. Pardon me to jump in. It says, some of the provisions... A person who engages in activities that result to mutual suspicion, I don't wonder how to determine that, mistrust, distrust, or intolerance, which degenerates into conflict and violence that threatens the corporate existence, peace, and security of the Federation of Nigeria, commits an offense and is liable to conviction to a fine of five million or imprisonment for a term of 10 years he, or Yes, you see, you, you see, that aspect wow. of the bill, that aspect of the bill targets, you know, criminal elements, bandits, uh, groups that do not mean well for the, for, for, for the sustenance of our democracy. 
again, His Excellency Mr. Speaker has done the needful, he has withdrawn this document. And you see, the People's House, we have done quite a lot, you know, in terms of supporting public debate, public opinion, ex uh, freedom of speech, expression of young Nigerians to participate, you know, in our legislative activities. So I, I, I think uh, what we have learned from the introduction of this bill and the withdrawal of the bill, and from what the feelers that we have gotten from Nigerians, is that yes, they are still satisfied, they are still happy that for the first time we're having a parliament that listens to the yearnings and aspirations of for the For the people. first time? Yes, <laughs> I we guess have the, a parliament. the president's chief of staff will have something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> but let us yeah, because this, you, you because see, you said for the first time, no, and I know he used to be you, speaker, you and the, every, every house, you know, before this one will claim that they too have listened to the people. And you say for the first time, you know, you have a speaker, or you have a house that is listening to the people. But it is interesting that you're listening to the people, even though the ideas that you have were never people-centric. Take a look at this particular one. Uh, I, I, I do not know if in the drafting of this bill, you know, uh, the drafters were aware that there are people who, owing to their faith, their religion, do not sing the national anthem. It's their faith. And, and it falls right under the freedom of speech. I mean, if you're singing the national anthem, they will stand up, but they don't sing because of their religion. Uh, I don't know whether that's because I see here an attempt to criminalize that. It says the bill also provides that a person who destroys national symbols mm. refuses to recite the national anthem and pledge. And this is in a situation whereby our national anthem has just been recently changed in a manner that people have complained about and are protesting on. Are still prote there are people who are still protesting about that, about how that national anthem was changed. Then you go and put something like this to criminalize it. I mean, what were we thinking? Uh, my sister, uh, I was born a Christian, but I practice African traditional religion and I promote it. And I know very well that my friends who are Muslims uh, do not in any way uh, feel by virtue of their religious belief that nobody at any point in time should not observe some of these uh, national symbols. Uh, in, uh, when we go to church, we're encouraged you know, to obey the law of the land. And for the national anthem, it, it, it has come to be for what it is at the moment. You cannot change it except another bill is reintroduced in the parliament and something is done about it. Yeah, but, but people, what, can, people can protest. I mean, they have the yeah, right yeah, to say, yeah. well, I do not recognize, I do not, I'm not happy in the manner it was changed, and as such, I would not sing it. No, you, you, you see, uh, yes, we have our opinion, but once it has become a law, uh, it, it rests at that. For instance, some people do not like the new Naira note, but that has not stopped them from spending the new Naira note. <laughs> you may not like the color of the national flag, but once it is adopted as the flag of your country, some of us are not fans of green. The new national flag. No, I mean the national flag. The flag you, was never changed. No, what I'm saying is this. You may not like green or white, but today that is the national flag, and that is the color, and that is what the law says it is. So you must obey what the law says it is. Our laws, I mean, the way we make laws uh, have been prescribed through a process. Uh, and if some of these processes are not observed in terms of how the laws come about, don't the people have a right to complain about that? No, you have the right to complain, mm -hmm. and there are also legal frameworks that are already established mm -hmm. when a citizen has complaints against uh, laws. Mm -hmm. So it is either you go to court to challenge the law, mm -hmm. or you come back to the parliament, which is a law-making body, uh, uh, to sponsor a private bill. I understand that some young Nigerians are equally proposing a new national anthem, something totally different from the old new national anthem, mm. the one that was just left behind. I think also in this studio, a friend of mine has equally suggested using TV Dakolo's song as a new national anthem. But there are procedures for doing these things. Mm. You have to send them, you route them through the parliament. I'm saying that, yes. you know, I mean, that's one instance. Mm. People who are still aggrieved about how that national anthem was, that's one kettle of fish. Yeah. Another kettle of fish, which has been for many years, and these people that I refer to, they are law-abiding citizens. They pay their taxes. They contribute positively to the economy. But a part of their own faith preaches that they do not sing 
the national anthem of any country. They are an international group. They are all over many, many countries. They're citizens of many, many countries. But they do not sing national anthem of any country. Well, the three religions are you aware that, of that? Yeah, the three religions that we have in Nigeria today, uh, we have not seen any injunction or any doctrine that uh, promote disobedience to national symbols. It's we not a disobedience. They just simply don't sing it. Well, uh, and they have a right to keep quiet, don't they? Well, uh, you may have a right to keep quiet, but you may not uh, have an absolute right to remain uh, seated while others are standing. Yeah, they don't sit. I have said that they do not sit, but they do not sing it. So when you say something like they refuse, because it doesn't say here that it, it, they refuse to stand up when the national, it says refuses to recite hmm. the national an anthem and pledge. Are you aware of that? Well, uh, the, 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 the part of the criticism that we have articulated, we have looked at before the withdrawal, we actually didn't see that. And again, you see, even if this was allowed to go through the second reading, parliamentarians were going to put up their argument for and against the bill. Nigerians have elected us to do that mm. on their behalf. In the, manner in, and which, that, in the manner in which a lot of bills have been passed through the House in recent times, people doubt very strongly that that would have happened. No, yes, because uh, even nowadays we have been told that public hearings do not matter. The House can pass it however it, it chooses to pass it. No, That's but, what we have been told. No, no, no. But Mr. Speaker, uh, right on the Mutajdin Abbas, is a promoter of public debates. Aside public debates within the parliament, the yeah, 10th House of Representatives, mm -hmm. we have equally engaged town hall meetings to engage citizens. Yeah, but you engage town hall meetings and yes. everything we apart from the national anthem which everybody is supposed to sing and everybody is supposed to own. Isn't that correct? That it, it didn't go through public uh, hearing? There was no public hearing for that. Was there? Uh, we, you, you see, like I have mentioned this no, just earlier a, before. Yes or no first, was there a public hearing for the national anthem? There was an emergency public hearing. Emergency? Yes. There was people no were public expected. hearing, no, just that, to, Honorable Agbese. Uh, you were probably not invited or you didn't attend. There was For something as important mm. as a change of a national anthem, mm. who, the press wasn't aware, media wasn't aware, the people weren't aware. Who were the people who attended that public hearing? Uh, uh, we've, I think we've debated this before. It, it, it actually passed through uh, the right procedure. And we are saying we're still open. You know, to say that even that we have done this, it has become a law. We are still open to receive views and debates from Nigerians, you know, how to make changes to that. Because it's a continuum. That's what, the beauty what, of democracy. What can you say is the lesson that the House of Representatives has learned from the feedback you got from the instance that she's citing, a number of issues that I want to raise, but what are the, some of the things that you say the House of Representatives in particular has learned from the feedback you've gotten from the process and the criticisms that followed um, the procedure in which the national anthem was introduced? Yes, um, we as a parliament have uh, continued to say that yes, we want to serve the interests of the people, it means that um, we, the lesson from that is that uh, there's still more room for further engagement. Like what happened yesterday with the withdrawal of this bill, uh, yes, it, it shows clearly that more Nigerians are also interested in the activities of the parliament. But there, 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 there was our, an outcry again, my apologies, mm -hmm. there was an outcry by Nigerians about the new national anthem. Um, how come there was no response, no similar reaction of the House of Representatives to, to that particular no, process? Uh, no, you, you see, like the, the national anthem, the, the, the criticism were not that uh, there was anything wrong with the change. Uh, people were just complaining that, you know, we are already used to something and we are no, changing. No, that's not the criticism. The, but, peop the criticism that people came up with, we don't mind this national anthem because a good number of people have been used to it for a long time. Yes. The problem is you sprung it on them like a surprise and they were supposed to take it whether they liked it or not. I, uh, no, we, you, you see, before that, uh, before that point, uh, there were other legislative activities you know, that members are engaged. We, we debated it. But then these members, did they, did they take these issues to their constituents? Yes, you see, the, our representative function as a parliament is that you are in constant communication with your constituents. Like myself, many members are in so many WhatsApp groups 
where they have daily engagement. I thought the house, uh, you said it, they don't want unauthorized WhatsApp groups. Yes, the house. No, unauthorized WhatsApp groups created mm -hmm. by members to create confusion within the house. <laughs> <laughs> you determine which one is going to create confusion. <laughs> no, 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 because the Bible says that by their fruit you shall know them. When they start the you, agenda... You said you practice something else. Not you, Do you use the Bible in... But I've told you earlier that I was born into a Christian honorable. family. And, you, you know, we okay, put this... Okay, uh, honorable, that, that's understood. Let, let's go back to the issue of uh, this. I'm looking at... Uh, first of all, let me ask you. Is the, do you use technology in the process of lawmaking? Yes. How? Uh, part of our uh, legislative uh, instrument now, well, uh, part of our legislative agenda in the tenth assembly mm. is to deploy technology to get feedback from our constituents. Do you use feedback in the process? Do you, do you use technology in the process of writing the bills? No. You, you, you see, bills are sponsored by members, and okay. people who sponsor bills have their inspiration, they have their driving force, they have their philosophy. They are the things that they intend to achieve. Okay. So they, when they bring these bills together, mm. right, when a, an individual member puts a bill together, it is left for that bill to go through the parliamentary uh, processes. Okay. Uh, there is one that is very, very well used by everybody. Okay. It's called ChatGPT. <laughs> okay. I copied your bill. Okay. And asked ChatGPT if we have similar laws. Mm. And he gave me six. No. Give me seven such. Number one, Criminal Code Act of 2004, Penal Code, uh, Terrorism Prevention Act, Public Order Act, Cyber Crimes Provi Prohibition and Prevention Act, National Security Agencies Act, and it also mentions that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria includes provisions that protect the sovereignty of Nigeria. And I asked Chad GPT, do we need this law? If we already have this one. So the only thing different between this counter subversion bill yes. that's been pulled down and the previous laws, just penalties. Couldn't we have adjusted all these laws that have been mentioned by Chad GPT? You, 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 to just penalize and then we are not just everyone who still runs foul of, foul of whichever of these laws anyway. Yeah, you, you, you have a very good point there. Again, if the critics of this bill had allowed the bill to skate through and get to the point where public debate, public opinion, and public contributions became necessary, we would have got it to that point where people like you and other members of the civil society would have approached the parliament with these beautiful suggestions. That is the essence of public hearing. It gives the public the opportunity to come in and make input. You know what's interesting, no. Honorable? My apologies, yes. Chairman. You know what is interesting? <clears throat> when we employed you, and I always use this term of employment and not election. Yes. When Nigerians employed parliamentarians, yes. they expect that they know better than they do. So if I have to, if the, a law has to be pulled down because of my contribution, then it means that I could do a better job than you, and then I don't need you to be employed to do the job for me. That would be the ordinary position of an average Nigerian, don't you think? Uh, you, you see, the parliament is not like a clinic where uh, you are employed either as a doctor or as a nurse for spe specific function. Uh, uh, the process of electing people into the parliament, you know, in, in a democracy, encapsulates a system where all shades of characters, in what we describe as the beauty of democracy, you go to some constituencies, you see a hunter standing an election against a medical doctor, and by virtue of character, the people tell you, we prefer the hunter to the medical doctor. That, again, we hold public hearing, does not necessarily mean members of the parliament in the first instance didn't know what they were elected to do. It is what the law says that it is, that at every point in time, in, in terms of bills, mm. that we should allow for inputs of members of the society. All right. And we so, do that to further deepen democracy, to further engage with people, not necessarily. Uh, for instance, if a segment of the society feels that a candidate is not good enough, but the majority who feel that the candidate is better have voted him, 
And we are saying that that uh, uh, elected member or the employee's uh, opinion now supersede, it means you are equally, you know, shutting the access to freedom of expression to people who ordinarily should participate. You know, That's but the essence of public hearing. When we also did look through all of this, I mean, last time we were wondering, so having seen that and several other provisions, the question was then, look, so what exactly was the speaker trying to correct? What ill were they trying to correct with this bill? Your uh, Ayo has answered that question when he brought out no, no, no. the submission I, from was not the one... said in the old laws that the only difference between this one and the old law is the question of penalty. Nevertheless, oh, so the speaker wanted to penalize people? No, it's not about penalizing people. It is about a democratic... So that's the, object, the objective? No, you see, the, obje the, the objective of... It, it doesn't matter the way we see it, but the objective of every law in a sane society is to make society better, is to, you know, enthrone a better democratic culture, a better democratic society. Today, you know, it's very easy to say that uh, these are the set of people that the law is going to protect. Nobody is going to be in the parliament forever. Mm. You go so, there for a period of time, some, some of the people who are critics today were, uh, uh, were in the parliament even just a year ago. You know, part of what that highlighted was, because if you say, well, uh, he's highlighted it, the only difference was the penalties. This is part of what several people also talk about. If they notice that there's something, there's a disconnect in society and they're trying to bring in laws to correct them, I know we will ask you, you'll say, yeah, we always talk to constituencies on a regular basis, but clearly there seems to be that gap in terms of that connection. What do people really want? What will make that impact? Because the question would be, mm -hmm. if that had been properly done, it will get to this stage where you have to withdraw the bill. If you always tell us that you consult your constituencies, mm -hmm. you would have gotten this time from the get-go. You, you, you see, the, the bill was just at the first uh, uh, read it. It had just passed first reading. No, it is. I'm talking about engagement. before even getting to reading stage at all. No, 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 no. You you see, uh, uh, parliamentarians aside our parliamentary privileges. In, in a democracy, people are allowed to express their views and bring forward their suggestions that they think would help to make a better society. The bill sponsored by the speaker was his own suggestion. You know, he, 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 he didn't become a law because the speaker presented it. It came to the parliament. It was still going to come for second reading where members of parliament will make contributions. Well, part of what I'm and saying, saying is, that, part of what I'm saying is, it's not that they won't make contributions. They, they always will when it gets to the floor. Sometimes it could be emergency, it could be accelerated, uh, as long as the gavel hits and it passes. But what I'm asking is, look, this is a bill coming from this no less person than the speaker with several legislative aides that they've got. So a thorough job was expected to have been done before even this gets to this stage. Then you talk about, well, we're drawing this bill. Because if they had put in the work behind the scenes, you would have, you would have seen all of these highlights. And look, this is just a similar narrative. The only difference, as you highlighted, is the penalty. Uh, 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 you, you see, aside, Mr. Speaker, today, by privilege being the Speaker of the Parliament, and the leader of the house, which is at one end. The other end, his disposition to the issues of good governance, as I have witnessed as a member of the Third Assembly, you know, is top notch. Yeah, this, um, he has demonstrated, you know, in, 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 in countless ways that he means well, you know, for the citizens of this country. And again, he also has that residual power as a member representing a specific constituency. For instance, my uh, constituents besiege me on a daily basis with bills that they feel, you know, if sponsored by me as their representative, will help to better the country. So that a certain uh, uh, segment has criticized the bill. Segment? Yes. Does not mean... What do you mean segment? Because not everybody... It doesn't mean that because some persons have criticized the bill, it doesn't mean that the bill on its own does not have people who are promoting it. But we, we, we have rested that, you know, with the, the decision of the speaker to withdraw the bill. Uh, clearly honorable. showing that yeah. this man listens to public opinion. Honorable, one, one of the issues that Chamberlain raised, my apologies. Yes. One of the issues that Chamberlain raised is that disconnect. 
And the only one of the no, major I, I, ways, I'm just saying. a second, just a second, one way in which many people, and we have raised the issue on this program several times, is the trust deficit is increasingly being breached because of lack of communication. And I'm not just talking about giving out information. I'm not just talking about responding to questions from journalists. I'm talking about sincere engagement, sustained engagement between the parliament, mm -hmm. senate or house of representatives, and the people. It does not exist. And as a result, there will be mutual distrust. Uh, uh, there will be that position where people will say, these people are just doing what they like, and as Michael Jackson said, no, no, they don't even care about us. No, 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 we do. The, the tent has of representative order, the leadership of the Zesnesi, right on the Tajidina Abbas does. And to demonstrate that, that is why we have introduced extra uh, extraordinary legislative instruments, you know, to engage the people. Just before the recent protests, we had a meeting in the parliament where we had over 200 civil society organizations, NGOs, faith-based organizations invited to the parliament, young Nigerians, the National Assembly of Nigerian Students, and a couple of other organizations. We engaged them, you know, discussed the issue of good governance with them. We also had recently the open parliament uh, day where we, various committees had to address Nigerians, address their questions. So today the parliament is widely open to all Nigerians. And that is what we have achieved in the last one year. Nevertheless, there's still a lot to be done because it's a big country. And we understand that. We accept that we will still do more. And Mr. Speaker has said, the moment we return back from the, the, the recess, we will double our effort. Because we know that we're here for a short period of time, and we want to see to, 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 to a better Nigeria in our own time. What does double your effort mean? Yes. Well, what it means in essence is that if within the last one year, our oversight functions, uh, for instance, the Committee on Works, if they were able to look at 10 roads, road constructions in the country, Mr. Speaker expects them you know, to do more by visiting more roads to ensure that, yes, of course, what the executive claim to be doing, they are actually on track. Uh, that our committees, you know, special committees on investigation also carry out their duties as transparent as possible, as open as possible, and they do so by submitting reports timely. Mm -hmm. Another good example is the Consumer Review Committee. Every uh, uh, assembly will come up with this issue of Consumer Review Committee and they go up, uh, uh, across the world, around the country, you know, discussing the issue of consumer review. But what we have done this time, Mr. Speaker, has given a two-year timeline to the parliament to say we are not going to wait until the last day of the parliament before we conclude the issue of consumer debate. Within a period of two years, he wants to see, and that is why that committee is engaging uh, with critical stakeholders. They had a meeting recently in Lagos where uh, heads of courts in Nigeria were invited, the judges were invited to be part of the process of amending the constitution from the beginning. So they guide the committee so you don't make laws that become cumbersome for the courts at the end of the day to interpret. Mm. So these are some of the things that we are doing. I'm glad that you mentioned two things. You mentioned oversight yes. and you also mentioned constitution review. I mean, as part of the areas where we should be seeing a redoubling of efforts. Yes. In recent times, we've seen um, departments and agencies complain that when members of the National Assembly uh, go or come for oversight at the different uh, ministries, departments, and agencies, they are made to bear the cost of the uh, oversight of members coming in terms of their welfare, in terms of uh, transport sometimes, in terms of uh, accommodation, etc. These are things that they believe provisions have already been made for by the House of Representatives. Still, it would appear that the agencies are made to bear the burden. Is this a situation you are aware of? I will give you a very good example. The House Committee on Foreign Affairs is planning a tour of our missions abroad. Hmm? The House Committee on Foreign Affairs is planning in, uh, to oversight to visit some of our uh, foreign missions to see hmm. what is going on. You know, complaints by Nigerians that in some of the embassies uh, abroad, uh, when they go, they can't get passports. They are not being properly attended to. And I will tell you for free what that committee is doing. The committee is raising the resources to be able to get tickets 
from members of the committee. How many embassies are they planning to visit? Uh, All of them? We have a lot. Yeah, we have that's a lot, lot of money. They, yeah, no, no. They, they are trying to do that on their own. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes this parliament different. Like this, some of these issues you have mentioned, since I came into the parliament, I've not experienced them. Because we have visited some agencies in committees where I'm a member, and I know that we took the pain as a parliament to make provision for our accommodation. We have visited some agencies. I know that we visited a, a Nimasa in Lagos. We all managed to get our air tickets. So th this, this, is, no th this is completely so, strange to you, this particular, because I, I'm not yes, making it, this it, up. This is something that we as journalists have received and, as complaints from members who people these agencies, yes. that oftentimes they are made to bear the burden. And it's not one, two, three members. You have members as many as 25 in, in some instances who come to come and perform this oversight. And the agencies have to bear the burden. I don't know about flight tickets, but they speak about hotels. Uh, the members, I mean, the agencies are made to bear the burden of the hotels. Is this something you are aware of? No, no, I'm not aware of that. You're not it's aware strange. of it? Because even in the civil society... It's strange? Yes, it's strange. Because even when I was in the civil society, I didn't hear this. But now that you have mentioned this, I'm going to take it back to... The so you're, you're hearing it for, for the first time from me? Yes, I'm hearing it for the first time. So I'm going to take it back from you to Mr. Speaker. And as a matter of fact, it is something I'm interested in. I want to see a situation where either we sponsor a bill to make sure that when members are going on oversight, the parliament caters for that. But I understand very well that some of the local trips, you know, for the parliament that I have a backed on, you know, have been paid by the parliament. So you were not in the country during the Rohema Hembe saga? I was actually in the country. You didn't hear about it then? I think the matter was in court. Interestingly, in Honorable Hema Nembe is from Benue State, isn't that correct? Yeah, but we're from, no, but we're from two different constituencies. Uh, but he's from Benue State? Yeah, he's from Benue. Okay, but you, from two you heard his name at that time, but you didn't know what that issue was. I didn't know. Because you see one thing, oh. eh, eh, quite a lot that some of us heard about the parliament that motivated us to want to go into the parliament. We are now in the parliament and we can't find those things. Mm. In other words, they were cook, cooking them up? The, yes. They were quite, cooked up? Quite, quite a lot. The, an allegation as grievous as that on live TV was cooked up? And no, the one, you, you see that issue between uh, Hembe and uh, Aruma Ote, I think he's still in court. The court has not, or whether him, uh, Hembe has been discharged and acquitted, I'm not fully aware of the details. So you heard you know, about it then? I, I heard about it, but I know it went to court. I don't know if, uh, because the man is not in prison. If he's not in prison, it means that he has been discharged and acquitted. Okay, and so it, it, it was it was the of whatever the offense today, that... Uh, the, the, the allegations made by that person. I think the, the point that yes. my colleague makes with, you know, highlighting that is that this is not the first time such a thing is yeah. being said. That yeah, but not parastatals a... and agencies bear the burden of members who come to oversight them. And that when they do not, I mean, that was what happened in the yeah, Aroma not, Oche case. Yeah, yeah, but not... When it's not borne by them, then they, ha they are witch hunted. They are blackmailed, and you know you might find all manner of things. Look, These are the allegations. Yes, you, it's, it's as far back as that time. Yes, you see, when we came on board as a parliament in the tenth house of representatives, we identified some of these issues. You know, the issues that created the trust deficit between, you know, the parliament and the executive. And I can tell you that some of these things are already in the past, because with the tenth house of representatives under the leadership of Tajdin Abbas, we've done quite a lot to carry out in-house cleansing and to sanitize the system. So that's why today uh, I can authoritatively confirm to you that members who go on oversight go there strictly to carry out their activities and they return back to the parliament so, about this oversight, to present reports. Is it not possible that these members of the Foreign, Foreign Affairs Committee, yes. um, why do they have to, because there are lots of embassies yes. that they're going to have to travel to. Travel tickets is going to be a in millions. So would it be out of place mm. if they look at what is it you want to do exactly, identify which are those officers responsible to answer the questions, invite them over to the country. Because if you want to travel to 20 countries, uh, you, 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 that's a lot of money. Uh, no, no, you, you see, this is one thing about the current uh, house. We, it's not just when you see bills in the house that we react to. Not just what happened yesterday. You agree with me that under the current leadership of this, this current speaker, we are trained quite a lot. For instance, what, necess what necessitated the decision by that committee, you know, to travel or planning to travel is complaints by Nigerians. 
and we are here to serve them. So if the man who has employed you feels there are certain issues that require your attention, you must make provision, you know, to give them that sense of belonging and to listen to them. Do they have to travel to listen to the people? No, they no. cannot invite the, the high commissioners, the ambassadors to the country. That too is answer those questions. No, that too is also ongoing. There are some countries where we don't have missions. When Nigerians abroad uh, uh, in diaspora have been complaining, you, we, we, there is a need for us to meet them. They are complaining about and, the missions that we don't have. I don't get. It. Yeah, that we don't have missions. They have needs that no, there's no embassy to attend to them and other issues. So they want to go attend to those people there. You, you see, let me tell you something. One unique thing about this parliament. Every issue raised, every issue raised either as a debate on the floor of the house or as public petition by Nigerians, we attend to them. Mm. And in an attempt to, uh, to, to, to attend to them, there are strategies to carry out these things. Let me quickly raise this other issue because you talked about constitution review. The yes. Patriots, a group led by a very distinguished gentleman, I'm, I'm sure you know him, elder statesman, Chief Emeka Yoko, yes. uh, recently visited the president and they were talking about uh, a brand new constitution, and that has been in the air for quite a long time. Is it something that the House is considering? Well, uh, what we are doing in the House is an amendment. We, an amendment to a large extent or to some people may look like a brand new constitution. Hmm. But to, those, you know, to those who are amending it. Yes, to those who are amending <laughs> it, or for those who feel that certain areas actually require amendment. So what we are doing as a parliament is to give room. We, 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 the, the, the Consular Review Committee is also going to invite the patriots to send in their input. Mm -hmm. well, all so they we, have asked is that you know, the current amendment should include an amendment to see how a new constitution can be made and a referendum yeah. taken. That's what they have been asking for. And not just the patriots, and this is something that has been on for years. You, mm -hmm. were, you were here at least when the 2014 National Conference took place. And all the agitations before that time. We see over and over again. Is this something that the People's House is concerned enough about? Yes. We are interested in having a working document called a constitution that Nigerians will be happy to call their own. And that is why we are inviting everyone. We are going to invite the patriots. We are going to invite every segment like we have already commenced. You know, to bring in, we will receive a memorandum from uh, people. We are considering them. We are looking at them. Mm -hmm. Very soon, the committee is going to be having an engagement with the Nigerian youth on their input into the constitution. The last one we had was in Lagos, where we interacted with heads of court. And I recall that even the magistrates, you know, came to that committee to make a submission that magistrates in Nigeria should be regarded as judicial officers, as part of their own suggestion to the amendment. So by the All time right. we are done, I believe that a working document that solves, that addresses the issues militating against the, the country, will be seen as a brand new document, not necessarily uh, going to America or to London to import a document and say this is a new constitution. Well, the House Committee on Foreign Affairs should know that if they embark on trips that you could avoid and spend more money that you can avoid, you know there'll be a backlash. No, we are so no, 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 you, you see, not just the... No, I mentioned, no, just I a piece of... No, uh, it was a reference. Yeah, I, just, I just cited an example. We have over 136 committees in the House, and every committee is up and running. No, I'm, I'm just citing an yes. example of what no, might happen if that committee, example for, for, comes I'll give, I'll, give so, a, I'll give a good example. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Pardon me. But, uh, of course, it's something we can always discuss moving forward much later. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, Honorable Philip Agbese, Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Information. Business Morning on Sunrise Daily comes up now. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. And yes, we do business right here. Starts from the global space. Oil prices rose on Thursday, supported by optimism that potential U.S. interest rate cuts will boost economic activity and fuel consumption. The concerns of a slower global demand curbed gains. Yes. Yesterday, we had those inflation numbers from the United States looking good, now below the target of 3%, 2.9% is what it came at. So we see oil prices obviously reacting to that possibility of a rate cut by September. $79.95 for Brent, 0.24% uh, gain. While for uh, WTI of the United States, we can see uh, the gap there reduced right a bit, uh, just a bit right there, 79 and 76. 
7, 0.3% gain is what we saw for the WTI, obviously driven by that positive sentiment around the CPI that uh, was out yesterday. So both benchmarks fell more than 1% on Wednesday after U.S. trade inventories rose unexpectedly and on easing worries. So, of course, uh, investors are also still looking at Iran uh, yet to retaliate you know, on that killing of their leader. I wonder which way it will look, uh, leaving a bit of uncertainty around there. Now, for the second time, the second trading session, we see the Naira depreciating since the um, Dutch auction system was introduced by the central bank last week. So yesterday, again, we saw that the Naira depreciated. On Nafim, uh, the, of course, uh, it dropped by 3 Naira 95 Kobo, lost 3 Naira 95 Kobo there to close at 1,586 Naira 4 Kobo for nafem while for nafect it lost 12 naira 35 cobble to close at 1585 naira 89 cobble well uh the anticipate rates will trade around these levels so uh, maybe a bit higher or a bit lower uh, by the close of trade today so just a couple of days ago, the central bank did tell us that they're going to reintroduce the publishing of macroeconomic indices. We got excited about it. The regulator has now released the Purchasing Managers Index for July 2024. And this survey, they say, was conducted between July 15 and July 19 to gauge the direction of economic activities. Let's keep our eyes on the numbers right here. I must say, we are really glad. Kudos to CBN for these numbers. We've missed them, only waiting on, you know, private uh, institutions uh, like, I, I think, Stanbic was the most popular. But we should have a more holistic view right here. So we see... Uh, PMI for July, the, per, the services sector is the only one that is positive. You know, anything above 50 is positive, shows you that that sector is growing. So we saw the services sector up at 50.3%. Industry, however, is in the negative 48.3%. Agriculture also negative 49.7%. Now, um, the PMI generally, of course, is made up of, uh, the, that's the composite, is made up of out new orders, employment, and raw materials. And we see most of them in the negatives, just outputs that's positive. That means, you know, um, production coming out from the real sector, right? They're at 50.3. New orders reduced. Purchasing power is reducing, so I guess others will expectedly reduce. Employment down. Raw materials, however, is uh, on like on chain, 50.7. So this is the PMI for Nigeria from the Central Bank. Central Bank, thank you so much for this. We we'll look forward to more numbers. I guess I should also say that we're expecting inflation number for the month of July also today. I think about noon or so before Business Incorporated, I believe we should have that. That's to be coming from the NBS, uh, but subsequently I'm sure we'll have either expectations or so from the CBN. And then uh, also yesterday marks the beginning for customs, the Nigeria Customs Service. They started implementation of 0% import duty and VAT exemption on essential food items following President Bola Tinubu's approval. The policy effective today, July 15, and it's run up to December 31, aims to lower food prices in the country. The tax relief applies to basic food staples like maize, rice, wheat, millet, and it's supposed to benefit importers. Uh, importers must have milling capabilities and a very verifiable background integration program. So um, that's one of the efforts of this administration to reduce the price of food even though we do know that's, you know, that's kind of short term. Well, still around the customs, the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, Mr. Bashir Adeni, says that relevant stakeholders are working to propose a solution to the forex volatility, which is negatively impacting businesses in the country. Mr. Adeni was speaking at the Trade Facilitation and Revenue Generation Public Lecture organized by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and it was held in Lagos. It's a public lecture by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria as they turn their attention to trade facilitation and revenue generation with a focus on the option for an import-dependent economy. 
Conversations here centered around the Nigeria Customs Service, the intervention before now, and the need for even more interventions. One, which is a reason for the suspension of price verification system in line produced by the CBA Central Bank of Nigeria. The restoration of some critical raw materials in the list of 41 items in the receptor for forex. Although we will have lost some trick along the line, we will still have to appreciate this because it was one of the efforts that we made. Are changing. The Controller General of Customs, Bashir Adewali, connects with some of the frustrations of the manufacturers. This year alone, in the first quarter, this rates rates changed 28 times. It was even more alarming in the second quarter, it changed 42 times. So sometimes you wake up in the morning with one rate before the close of business, it has changed. I've had engagement with the Governor of Central Bank, and he's also concerned that it is no longer sustainable for us to keep this kind of regime. If we bring all the stakeholders together, manufacturers, captains of industries, the banks, customs, we may be able to achieve a perfect handshake between the fiscal requirements and the, uh, what is happening in the uh, uh, monetary environments. Challenges. However, what some of the challenges are beyond the customs. The container load from Lagos going to Amuwa Dauphin, you pay the same value for a container load from Apapa to Ibadan. At every point, the Agbiru stopped and demanded for money. We appeal to government to help us look into this because it's a great embarrassment. It's added more cost to our production activities. Conversations and plans initiated here is expected to climax at the manufacturer's 2024 annual general meeting planned for October. We have our eyes on the manufacturing sector today. Um, I think the chief executive officers index is also out uh, we'll talk about that in the afternoon or later on here on the program but now let's uh, look at that in import waiver which begins today interesting and we have joining us to discuss in our commodity segment now Dumi Biuluoli as uh, senior analyst with financial derivatives hi Dumi B. good, good morning, morning. second good morning. time this week yes happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> so so I mean the import waiver that the federal government talked about begins today yes uh, but we always talk about the lag you yeah. know when it comes to policy yeah. Uh, so uh, I wonder how long you think it will take before we start feeling the effects in the market. They said it's going to end by December 31st. Um, I would say this, this is not so much the case where you would have that kind of long lag effect between policy and implementation simply because um, this is exactly what it is. You're going to buy, <laughs> you're going to get your products at a very subsidized, at an, somewhat like a subsidized rate. Yeah, but you, know, you know the traders already have old stock. Yes, so, so that's where I was going to. So by the time, you know, they're selling that off, then we're going to definitely see that oh, prices might still remain high up until maybe because it's starting today. Um, so let's say for about a month and then we will now start seeing um, reduced prices. And besides, remember on Tuesday, we already started seeing that some pr some prices for some commodities were already declining just simply because we're seeing, you know, um, some in increase harvest. in supply. Mm -hmm. And remember that this um, um, import waiver is coinciding with the harvest season as well. So the the, um, the uh, uh, combined impact of that on the on the food food market will, might likely be very positive going forward. And then when you look at the impact of this on the broader headline inflation numbers, you see that we do expect, you know, inflation at, in subsequent months to somewhat taper, simply because, you know, base effects are also going to, you know, have an added uh, positive impact on the headline inflation rate. But to be very clear on how this would, you know, translate in the economy. So already we're seeing that, yes, prices are reducing, but then again, you have to consider the fact that our people really equipped now to you know with their income levels are they equipped to purchase you know the commodities so we do expect that at the, in the upcoming months people will definitely plan mm. you know it's not a situation where there's panic buying now where you have to buy when but, prices but are this completely doesn't look reduced. like it's going to be very good for the farmers because eventually when the market is flooded yeah. then the farmers will be forced to reduce the price and uh, they also have to plan for the future this yeah. is ending in december i mean if 
So this is it. We, we tend not to look at a lot of situations like this in that regard because it's like, it, it, think of it at a time where it's like crunch time, right? Where everybody is coming together to ensure that there is some level of um, price stability, especially for food in the country. So farmers right now, they are already harvesting, they're selling, they will obviously sell, sell their products. This is one of the situations where we do expect marketers to leverage on volume of sales rather than um, the pricing in itself because when prices are reduced and you're able to sell at a large quantity you should be able to somewhat net it off and again this is also coinciding to an extent with the fact that petrol prices so their logistics cost petrol prices and diesel prices are not exactly as exorbitant as some months back um, so we do expect that that would a, a little bit reduce the expert the operating expenses on distribution and logistics as well so the combined impact of all of this over the next Couple, couple of, of four, months. A couple of months will be somewhat positive. I wonder what will happen after December, though. Um, again, this, obviously, these are policies that have to be reviewed to see the impact, and this is where one of the one of the conversations about implementation and execution comes to place. So when we when we you know enact policies like this and we obviously see how the markets are receptive towards it and we see how impactful it is in this kind of economic economic, economic times that we're in where you know we need to ensure that there's somewhat some there's somewhat like food security and social tensions are not high you know so this is something that we do expect should be sustained at least up until when the mm. um the reforms start phasing out a bit yeah i hope we would uh, have uh, at the background while we're enjoying this yes we're having a longer term Term, yes, for instance, dealing with the issue of insecurity yes, so definitely. the farmers can get back and you know definitely. and all of that. So by the time this is waning off, then we have the supply from there. But today is inflation day. Yes. What's the FDC saying? I mean, um, we do expect that inflation would still, you know, somewhat increase, but the rate of increase will be lower. And this is because um, of what, what exactly happened in the month of July compared to what is happening um, right now. So in the month of July, we saw an increase in, we saw the Naira depreciate a bit more, and that obviously would have an impact on importation costs and then um, prices. We also still saw a lot of commodity prices increase um, significantly. In July, the prices of tomatoes were really high, pepper was really high, onions was really high, rice as well, and we do expect that to have an impact on the inflation numbers. And um, what is extremely important to note is when the NBS goes out to actually collect, collect the data and analyze, they actually do this within the first two weeks of the month, of the, uh, um, yes, of the period. So meaning that this survey, the numbers we're going to see are actually what happened at the at, within the first two weeks or first three of weeks July. of July. And within those periods, that's when we saw all of these things happen. Uh, well, I think, I think that we can, we can um, expect good numbers by the end of yes. August because of we're beginning of August on, on good notes. On good notes, We have yes. the harvest, we have the tomatoes yes. and pepper. Yes, now definitely. we have the import waiver coming yes. into that. So yes, uh, definitely. a bit of stability. Yeah. And the protests and all of that definitely definitely so but one thing to just note is the rate of increase in inflation rate so while the number might look very might look higher um we also consider on the on another layer of analysis the rate of increase in inflation and when you look at what has been happening from the beginning of, of the year up until june you see that the rate of increase in inflation rate has actually slowed down so we're coming from a period where inflation the rate of increase in inflation as of february and march was around 1.5 percentage point and as of June, even when inflation actually increased to 34.19%, we saw the rate of increase significantly decline to 0.2%. So we do expect that the rate of increase would, would decline again, um, but the number will just be a little bit higher than yeah, what Yeah, but I mean, we look forward July. to when we do like US yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> They're yes. even below the target now. Their target is 3%, or no, they did 2.9%. Yes. Unlike the UK, though, UK had a little bit of increase. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, I think this puts us for the US on the path to uh, rate, rate cuts, cuts yes. which we are hoping for. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely. Just When you look at the entire the temperature of the global inflation and interest rate environment, you do see the same pattern coming up from the US spread, from the Bank of England, from the European Central Bank, even the Bank of Canada as well. You see that almost everyone right now is, you know, easy their, 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 their tightening measures because price pressures are already, you know, abating. Um, for Nigeria, the situation but is not yet But we did ease, anyways. We did just 50. 
I mean, 50 basis points point. increase. Is increase. That compared so to what is, we've done before now? Yeah, definitely. But one thing, I think I mentioned this on, on Tuesday. Um, one thing we need to understand is how the um, central bank monitors inflation and what and how that drives the decision that they make. So they're not only looking at the headline inflation number. Most central banks look at the underlying inflation rate. That's the core inflation rate. And when you look at the core inflation rate in Nigeria for the, over the past month, you see that that has steadily increased, even faster than the rate of increase in the headline inflation rate. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the underlying things that are causing inflation to rise in Nigeria are still very prominent. So things like the exchange rate volatility, things like um, low agricultural sector productivity. And that now brings me to the point where you already mentioned before that, you know, aside from these short-term measures, we need to have long-term measures in place. But again, the, with the levers that the monetary policy uh, uh, authorities can pull, they basically just have interest rates and their, their other monetary policy Yeah, tools. we look the way of fiscal, right? Yeah. Yes, not right now. That's yeah. that's the way to look. All right, Dumebi, thank you so much uh, for your analysis. This thank morning. you so Enjoy much for having me. You too. You too. All right, now let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to manufacturers. You did see some of the issues. Uh, Dumebi mentioned the FX issue, FX volatility, and all of that. We'll delve into that after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Watching Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. We delve into the manufacturing sector now and uh, see some of those issues, which you're very familiar with. We saw some of them in that report that was played earlier. And we have joining us for this conversation now, Dr. Emmanuel Hiakwazi is a managing director and chief executive officer of Nes Nesit Nigeria Limited. Uh, Dr. Hiakwazi, good morning and thank you so much for your time. So talking as a manufacturer now, um, we're just talking about the import waiver that comes into implementation today in Nigeria for staple food. Uh, we know that the manufacturers have been talking yesterday, the customs uh, controller was with manufacturers here in Lagos. I talked about issues around, especially the FX volatility, uh, the issue of logistics. Perhaps you want to emphasize on some of these issues. Of course, I will when we come to my own aspect. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to your own aspect. Okay. Uh, wonderful to be in your midst this morning. Uh, my name's, uh, I think I should remove that doctor at this point because <laughs> there is crisis in the line. Okay. And uh, there is also hunger. Uh, I don't think we deserve title as of today. But I believe that when the economy gets up to our expectation, then we can take back our titles. But let's work together to make Nigeria great again. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Ihagwazi, the Managing Director of uh, Nesit Nigerian Limited, as quoted. And by God's grace, we are indigenous uh, manufacturers in Nigeria, a member of uh, MAN, also a member of Lubricant Association of Nigeria. And we are working hard with government to ensure that we put food on the table of the masses. And it has been a great time. But um, as I too, as I am trying to, you know, open up with you, there are quite challenges in industries today. There are. What are those challenges, the most pressing ones? Actually, the most pressing one is the issues we are having in the banks. Quite challenging. Uh, I think um, we came into business uh, when the government introduced the ease of doing business. And instead of going to abroad to look for investors, we say, why can't we be the investors since we, we have the same brain? that uh, the white people has and the Chinese and other people, we have the same brain and we have the same talent. And when the government introduced that ease of doing business, and then we follow it. It is aimed to make sure that we industrialize our country and it's also aimed to increase the GDP of this country and then for us to be great like the Asian and the European and uh, Americans. So we embrace it. And indeed, in those days, the bank are indeed business enablers. Because I could remember vividly that uh, Bank of Industries, uh, when we started, they lend us money. And we finished, we paid them. It was fantastic. In fact, that is the starting point. And later, the banks also, at that time, they were keeping to their word. But I don't know what happened. 
What do you mean they're, they're not keeping to their word? They're not giving funds or the funds are too expensive? No, 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 no. They're not keeping to their word. Let me tell you what happened now. Why I say they're not keeping to their words. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we manufacture lubricant in Nigeria, and all the about the mobility you are talking about. Without lubricant, you can't move your vehicles. You can't get all those uh, uh, logistics in place. So <clears throat> that is what we did. And the raw material we use in producing those uh, products, we source uh, at least forty percent in Nigeria fantastically well. We are praying that in the, in the near future, we can have them 100%. But by now, as of today that we have not gone to that level, we source the 60% from abroad. We import from America, Europe, and then also Russians and other countries. So as a result of that, we have to open our LCs from banks, so we started from opening the LCs from bank. I could remember uh, we have to secure about a loan of two billion naira from um, one of the banks, and that is about five million dollar in those days. And uh, we, the little we are having ourselves, we keep on trading. But uh, for you to open the LOC, you can't go direct to CBN. You have to pass through bank. So the bank will come to my office. I have not gone to any bank. They come to our office because when they saw the factory, you know, they are happy with it. They come to our office, they told us they have dollars. And then we say, okay, open the lines for us. And they do. Then after importing 2001, 2002, and 2003, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> down to the end of 2003, there is a rumor that Naira will be devalued. And the bank, one of the bank wrote me and said that um, those effects that we have, um, we have paid for, we provided 100% um, cash back. In fact, they told us we are going to pro provide 130% uh, cash back. 130% instead of 100%. And I asked my FC, the financial controller, and the financial controller told me that, look, <clears throat> the 30% is for them to be able to take their charges and also the duration of them getting the money from the CBN, that that 30% covers that. So we, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't simulate any things on the way. So we quickly opened those LOCs. So, so, so because we don't have a lot of mm. time, the issue now... We, is after opening those LOC, the bank came after the devaluation of money and said that we should bring 400% addition. So are you saying the challenge now is access to FX? Is that what no, you're talking about? No, not access to FX. Then what? The, it is part of it, per se, but the bank is asking us that the previous LOC we opened with them, which we gave them money, for it and those goods has been sold and they're asking us that we should bring more money for that previous ones and i said bank where, where, where are we going to get those money so that is the issue all right you said 2021 is this a recent thing not recent things <laughs> they say that those loc they open for us 2021 that they as bank has not gotten the effects from the cbn to liquidate their own line but that is business between the bank and CBN, not to the customers. Because we provided 130% some bank, 120%. If I had that money, <clears throat> if I have bank by myself, I should only use 100%. And those goods have been sold, and it's no longer. So these are the issues that the bank is having between the bank and the central bank. So instead of them to push it to the central bank, which is their mother banks or per se you know how to put it they are regulators yeah they are regulators they are now since the they felt that the bank is the cbn is stronger than them they have to push it to the manufacturers in turn killing all the manufacturers because how where do you get such money so what's the way forward now that means you have not even started accessing you know the recent uh, system which the central bank has introduced the banks have been accessing the dutch system you know to get fx 
that's not trailing down to you. You are talking of a transaction you had in 2021. Before, for, that is the true issues. We have not started assessing. Now we are only getting money from, um, in fact, for the past uh, six months, I don't think we have not imported anything. We have not imported. It is so tough. It is have, so you, tough. have you approached the banks? Because they've been having supply from the central bank. You see, those things, you cannot understand them very well because that is what they're telling us, that the central bank is giving them FX. If central bank is giving them FX, why can bank comes up to tell me that the transaction 2021 has not been liquidated, having provided the cash 130%, the 12022 has not been liquidated, having provided the cash 100%, and the 12023 has not been liquidated? And you calculated all of them and multiply it with the new devaluation of dollar. And the bank is asking me, in those days, they came to the factory, they say this factory weighs 3.5 billion. And in, in accumulation, the bank is asking me that I should bring about 45 billion naira to come and settle FX. And it looks like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the murderers. <laughs> so what's the way forward now? The way forward is that we are appealing to the government to uh, look at the ease of doing business that they have introduced. It is following that ease of doing business. Today, we have employed direct and indirect about 2,000 workers working with us. And that is what brought us to this level. But because of these challenges that I told you now, if care is not taken, those 2,500 people will put off the streets. And then, the, the, you know what the implication in this kind of country where we are. So we are praying to the government to look into the industries, especially the manufacturers. We are partners with the government to make sure that the, the real ease of doing business, which they told us, that they should implement it. The number one, just like you have said about the tariff in the... Um, in imports, because if the tariff is low, we can be able to export to the neighboring countries. Then number two, it is this issue of banks. If the government was to devalue dollars, the devalue Naira as, they, as we claimed, they would have liquidated all the transaction that the bank has with them before that time, before they can devalue. For me, I'm not owing any bank. All the, because I provided 130%, so 120%. All right. And, and uh, the only thing I know uh, is that uh, this is our country and we are going to labor together to get out of all this. Yeah, place. we certainly have to deal with uh, issues, you know, and find a solution. Dr. Emmanuel Ihiakwazi, the managing director. It's, I shouldn't call you doctor because it's a crisis period. Yes, yes, managing yes, yes, director, yes, yes. chief executive officer of Nest at Nigeria Limited. Was that we try to reach out to, you know, some regulators or banks, you know, on this issue and um, find out what really, what really is going on? Because, I mean, we need manufacturers for us to grow our real sector. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, well, a worrying scenario there, yes. Uh, transactions of since 2021 now um, being asked to pay for it. Uh, but now um, it, we have just a couple of seconds, so we'll just tell you that the market yesterday closed again in the red. The NGX was down 0.2%, uh, lost at about 8 billion naira, the close of trade. And uh, we see mostly red, 0.5%. Uh, close mostly red, but we'll give you fresh numbers. We'll give you fresh numbers at 1 p.m. That's Business Incorporated. I'll be here on my own, unfortunately, but do join me when I have your coffee. I'll be fine. Let's head back to the Sunrise Daily Studio. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Yes, as you've seen, the <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Ayo Loro Femi joins us here this morning. Yes, he's the Deputy National Chairman of Labour Party. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. But the what, what appears to be or seems like a bone of contention is the governorship candidature for Labour Party in you know, those states. We've seen Chief Abisani uh, out there, and yesterday as well, you saw his campaigns, uh, how he was at least soliciting votes from the people for himself as the candidate of Labour Party. In fact, I think we can listen to a little bit of what he said for that campaign, but we'll also, of course, get you to respond to it. Let's have a look. Uh, 
Um, we'll get back to that. It's not uh, yet here at the moment. But you also have seen his campaign. Yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it. And there's been lots of questions and comments yeah. about all of this. What's going on? Drama. Who's the candidate? I am the candidate of the party. What about, why is he? Uh, my, name, my name is there. Uh, the, uh, you open why the is he spending portal. to campaign takes a lot of force? This person, this person contested uh, for this thing under the uh, People's Democratic Party. You know, I'm very amused when you say, <laughs> oh, you say, what's going on? He it's said drama. drama. <laughs> I mean, are we yeah. in the theater or yeah. where are we? That is exactly what's going on. <laughs> that is exactly what, when you have, I, I, will, I will take you to, to some of the, the development Please that do. led to this, you see. Um, you know that Ebisheni was a, a Zuna coordinator of the obedient, uh, cap, I mean, the OB presidential campaign council. Uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Doyokupu at one time as the director general. And then you will recall that uh, after we lost at the court, not at the pool, we lost at the court. Um, Ebisheni quickly said he never believed in the Labour Party and that he, he belonged to the People Democratic Party. He made that declaration. Your television station here carried it. He made a press conference. I have never been in Labour Party. I never believed in them. I only went to Labour Party because I was on so, uh, uh, succumbing by a Feni Feri to go and work for Peter Obi. So we didn't know, we didn't know that uh, uh, Ebisheni wasn't a member of Labour Party. Mm. And of course, we didn't bother to find out at the world level whether he is a, a card carrying member until he said, I don't have the card of Labour Party, and so I am back in my political party, PDP. Okay, uh, before that, we knew what that, was going that's on. That's a mistake on the part of Labour. Well, well, he he went, he left us, and we took it. I said, well, we were deceived. Next time, it will happen again. Deceived? Yes. There are many people who identified with the obedience movement mm -hmm. who were not. Either card carrying members of But those ones didn't say they belong to another political party. Or even members of even other political parties yeah, who but, supported But the they didn't government. go on air to say, oh, we never believe in Labour Party. Ah, we were in social political party. They were silent and they are still working very fast because of their experience and encounter with Labour Party. They want to remain. And that is why you have this issue of harmonization going on. Okay, we have challenges harmonizing all of these things, and we are we are capable of handling it, and we are going to handle it. So what I'm finding very mm. awkward is the fact that you say you were surprised. Yeah, because I mean, if, if, if he didn't go what, on air... What should surprise you? If he didn't that? go on air to say that he never believed in the Labour Party, he, never, uh, he was never a member of the Labour Party, we believe that, oh, this person actually joined at the, at the highest level, from the highest point. We'll be looking at him, oh, he probably... I mean, of course, he has joined, and uh, he was... We needed everybody at that time. Mm -hmm. But for you to go back now and say, oh, you never believed in what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. It's well, a different ballgame. Why should that shock Labour Party? Because Labour Party has been in existence even before the last general elections. Yes. How many votes has it ever garnered? Oh, you've forgotten that we rule a state. And we, our mark is still I'm in that state. I'm talking about the presidential level. How many yes, votes at the presidential has it? level, yes. at the presidential level before now, mm -hmm. we have never made the kind of success. So what, do what, what why, exactly is surprising it? Do you know why? I will tell you the reason why we made this, I mean, the kind of success we made in the last year. Uh, the TUC was involved. We organized and said we have to finish all the crises within the party. And the political commission was put in place. I happen to be the chairman of that political commission. We met consulted with NSC. We need to come together. And that was what led to that, uh, uh, that, uh, 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 that agreement that was, the agreement that had been banned all over the place that was reached as a result of the action we took. And of course, NSC at that point was also trying to align with uh, Mogalu, uh, uh, Mogalu and Co, with uh, Professor Pat Tumi to form an alliance with another political party. But TUC said, no, as far as we are concerned, we have a Labour Party. It would be a shame for us to leave our Labour Party and go and begin to arrange for another political party. Mm. So we said, as far as we are concerned as, as TUC, we are running with Labour Party. Mm. And that, Labor was, party that, was, that was what led to everybody agreeing mm -hmm. to that truth. And of course, when you can imagine, if all the Nigerian workers come together, I don't see anybody that can stop us. But because we are not yet ready, that is why they are still stopping us.
Mm. Well, it's, it's a big if there. But in the meantime, you know, it would seem that Labour Party really has to do its work on making people believe in it yeah. as a party, not yeah. the candidates that it presents. Yeah. Because it would seem that, yes, once in a while, you have a, a really good candidate that is able to galvanize the people. And as you cited the Ondo State example, where Governor Mimiko yeah. emerged uh, in Ondo State, uh, we also saw in the last elections, uh, gov former Governor Peter Obi, who was the candidate there, you know, galvanizing over six million votes uh, for to go by the, uh, you know, the results declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission. But aside from that, uh, aside this sparks we see, the party itself has not been able to maintain any real consistency. In and, terms that is, of, and that is why yeah. we are standing on our, and we are standing our ground on the current situation that we find ourselves. And we are moving at this point. And people who believe in us will join us. Mm. Are, you, are, you, are, you, are you with me? Are you marketing no longer... yourself? It's not like the question of people who believe in yeah, you. Yeah, we, we are marketing I, ourselves. I, I want to imagine I'm that a, we should a, be evangelizing. A, yeah, I'm a trade unionist. And I'm, I'm picking, I contested the, in the last election as a senatorial candidate, I mean, as a, as a senatorial candidate of my party. Whether, whether you vote for me or not, I am putting myself forward. Mm. And I'm telling people who I am and what I Stand to achieve. I mean, what I stand to. I mean, what I want to do for them. Mm -hmm. But and what they stand to achieve. Before they vote for somebody me. like Ebisheni will go out and campaign mm. and deploy that kind of resources in that campaign trail. Mm. Somebody, something must be giving him some assurance. Yeah. Are we saying that nobody in the party collected money for that campaign is, for yeah. governorship tickets? Uh, this is what happened. After he lost the PDP, he approached me and told me that he wanted to. I should, I should please give him the opportunity to run on our platform. I said, provided, I told him, provided you are able to make it within the period of uh, the window opened. Because a lot of people were coming at that time, you know, even from PDP. They were coming, even from APC, they were coming. But we, <coughs> we, 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 we were scrutinizing them to be sure that people who we accept are people who believe in our ideology, not people who come and mess us up. You know, you see, uh, we, we are talking about Mimiko today because of his performance. And when you look at the person of Mimiko in his nature and everything, his, his character and everything align with our, 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 our ideology, that is social welfare. Okay, so we, want to, we wanted to be sure. And when he came, you know, from the credential of Nifere and all of that, say, well, it's doable, provided you are able to uh, come within this period. He didn't come until the window closed and the INEC shot their porter. Then he came and said, ah, yes, there's another window in the electoral act. I said, I don't believe in all of those. Because it will require the party going to court to force INEC to do that. And I don't think I want to be party to that kind of argument. So you are not against his candidacy? Wait. At I've this been, point, I've been issue. I've been issue. Mm -hmm. And on condition that he will also resign his PDP, Membership membership, and also join the Labour Party at his word level. Vide a letter that will be written to his word. The word will forward to local government, local government to state, and it will get to national, the procedure, so that we don't run into the same mistake of the past. If you really want to join the party now, mm. tell us you want to join the party. Wait, he came to you as what? As deputy national chairman? He came to me as not only as deputy national chairman, but as the candidate of the party. Oh. And appeal to me to help him in terms of, you know, handing over to him the ticket of the party. Consider the fact that, yes, uh, uh, okay. he's from the South. Okay, just want to quickly uh, uh, just uh, put this out there. So we'll be uh, joining the Adamawa in Yola, actually. There's this uh, live broadcast of Poverty Elevation Program in Ribado Square on our DSCV platform, but all the other platforms are continuing with Sunrise City, so stay on with us. Well, Please go uh, ahead. Well, yeah. Salome, the, the question that I would, that, you know, boggles my mind, and a number of people will probably be wondering as well, is when you say that the party, your party was not aware of his status, and he was speaking so, you know, confidently and loudly for the party, if your party had gotten the presidential seat in the election, would you be saying this now? Well, uh, of course, I won't be saying so because uh, he will also 
perfect his papers. He will have perfected his paper. That's the nature of human being. You are playing game. And politicians, the general uh, politicians are used to playing game. So wait, both of you are campaigning campaign. now. No, no, no. He's campaigning, you are campaigning. The people you saw on the TV are PDP members. They are yet to join the party. You uh -huh. won't see any single Labour Party man in that... Uh, but how, 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 would the, how would the viewers... Abolaja is a PDP candidate. So how mm -hmm. come they are both listed as, you know, members of the Labour Party? No. Uh, you know, he... Abolaja cannot be a member of the Labour Party. I mean, they, they, yeah, I mean it's so. in the news as well, right? Ah, in the news? Yes. Abolaja. I'm hearing that, that he he's, uh, he's, he's he's the one, he's his running mate. No, 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 no. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, then, so. Maybe that's okay. drama. More <laughs> drama. You'll see what I'm talking more about. More drama. Okay. So, so all of these things are not known to members of the party. All these things. Yeah, but doctor, if he's campaigning, yeah. you are campaigning, yeah. how do the voters know and who are the party members who are not? They will go to that, uh, that column, Liberal Party, and they will tick it. Uh, yeah. but, but you know that's not how it works now. If there are two people can No, no, we will stop that now. Of course, we'll stop it at, at, at a point. We'll stop it by the time, in the next two weeks, we are moving to the field. We can't be on the field and we'll be on the field. And there's somebody whose name is in the Yannick Potter, except somebody wants to go to jail. Uh, you get what I'm saying? You cannot claim to be a candidate of the party when your name has not been submitted by the party leadership. So when the INEC has not accepted your name in other words, and uploaded your name, He's impersonating. Of course. Uh, yeah, I, I've looked at that. I said, is he impersonating? Because he's not saying he's a Yolon of Femi. <laughs> so he's an imposter. And I asked somebody, being an imposter, is it justiceable? I'm here to get that answer. Now, uh, okay. The, the question that, are, that also might also arise here, from what you said now, someone is an imposter, using your word now, as the candidate of the Labour Party in the governorship race. You know, in the Indo state as we speak. How many other people are there who are posing to be members of the Liberal Party or even contesting, you know, campaigning or whatever on the platform of the Liberal Party that the Liberal Party national body or even the state body does not know? Well, I wouldn't know either, but uh, one thing that I uh, may want to tell you is that uh, from the picture I saw, I saw Omar, the chairman of NTC, we call it a National Transition Committee mm -hmm. of NSC Labour Party. Uh, maybe that party will be registered before the election. and they, will, they open the portal for that party to be, to, so that they can upload his name. We are waiting for that to happen. But as far as we are concerned, as Labour Party, and as far as INEC is concerned, the issue of primary has come and gone. Is, is that to say that there is a, there's still some measure of teeth between the Labour Party and the NLC? Of course, if NSC could go ahead and organize a stakeholder, a stakeholder meeting that was never approved by the Labour Party itself and set up an NTC a transition committee, you know, after the Labour Party has successfully conducted a convention which has been adjudged by a court as valid. I mean, anybody who is doing anything outside this is contemptuous. Mm. And at the appropriate time, we will take, well, personally, I will take some action. Even though the, your presidential candidate in the previous presidential election you know, already said he, he was also at that meeting, speaking with the representative of the, of the NLC, calling for that uh, stakeholder engagement? I don't think so. I don't think so. He was not there. You were, Maybe uh, Tanko, Tanko Yunusa was there, uh, not representing the, our president. No, no, no. Our presidential there, there was, uh, I don't know, you know, there was you this see Peter will be there particular meeting where the NLC representative came and Mr. Peter Obi was saying it's a family meeting that they need okay. to discuss. Yes, he decided to visit NLC. That's a different board game. He visited uh, the NWC, okay, on several occasions he will visit. At times he will be passing through the National Secretariat, he will see activities going on. And branch, he said, okay, I just saw this going on. Or oh, I had this is going on, and I decided to leave Lagos to just show face here. Ah, he, this, he all, both are his family. Well, NSC, TUC, uh, Labour Party, yeah, they all belong to the same family. Uh, in, in family uh, matter, uh, you can't rule out this put. And when they have issues, they resolve their issues. And as far as this is concerned, uh, Peter will be for now, uh, is the most senior person. Although the national chairman is the most senior person in the party, but uh, we see Peter will be as our, 
as a most senior uncle in the party. So will, will be correct to use the word leader. Yes, leader of the party. All right. So he, the, the family belongs to him, and uh, he's free to enter into any house that belongs to the family and uh, uh, hold meeting with them, discuss with them, you know, way forward. So, How united would you say, Mr. Lauren Femi, that the Labour Party is, particularly in other states? We are one force in Ondo State. That is why you didn't see any local government chairman attend. That's so a, is it? Is it? Is it? The chairman of the, we have a we have a state working committee uh, intact. Okay. Yes, uh, we removed uh, we removed the the Kiatika, the former Kiatika chairman committee because he was working hand in glove with the, with the APC. In 2023, we had no candidate. I was the only candidate. It frustrated all our candidates in Ondo State. And check it. I was the only candidate in Ondo State. All of that candidates, some of them paid money to, 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 to the woman at the state level. And there was no, no record. No form. The form was not submitted in Abuja. So what happened? And I was there in Abuja expecting these things. At the end of the day, we had no candidate. We had to be running Heta Skeeter to court. And at the end of the day, it was messed up. So there's a limit to which we can continue to condone all of this kind of indiscipline. Talking about the limits to the to condoning those in discipline, what is the party's position about Mr. Abishini? The party position about Mr. Abishini is very clear. He was at a, 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 an NWC meeting was held uh, just because of him. And the, the decision of the NWC was passed to him. Sorry, much as Dr. Ayolor Femi wanted to do this, we cannot do it, do it because we have to go to court and we are not willing to go to court because of you on this matter. So case close. If you have done it, when the windows were open, that would have been better. But he still had that press conference. Well, he had a press conference on his own. And in the name of the Labour Party. Well, we will stop him. We will stop him. So in is the... there any action? Are of you, course, we will stop party him. going to take any action take... on what he has done? We will. We will. I've told you that I will take some action. Personally, I will take some action. Okay. Yeah, we, we consultation, yes, we had consultation, but we didn't conclude. And if a letter was issued or was written to you, and within one hour, another letter, you know, superseded that letter and said, withdraw this letter, that matter died there. It's a simple administrative procedure. But if Abishini could not understand that, and people around him could not understand that, that then we cannot Do help Do you them. see any action from... Do you anticipate any action from Afeni Ferry? Well, if Afeni Ferry decides to take, some, uh, take any action, it will also meet counter action. It's an institution, we are an institution. So you think I'm Afeni a Ferry might... Th this is a Labour Party. We are not think, afraid of anybody taking any action. You think Afeni Ferry might be you know, supporting him in this process? Whether they support him or they don't support him, it doesn't add anything, it doesn't remove anything from us. Okay, we are talking about the people. We're not talking about Afeni Ferry. We're talking about the people, the Ondo people, how their life will change. That is what concerns us. Mm. And we have done it before. They saw the, they, they, know, they know the difference between that time and now. Mm. And we are telling them we can mm. do it better. And this time around, they are having somebody who is not a politician. Who is that? Me. I'm not a politician. I'm and a trade unionist. And I'm committed to the welfare of the people. But you're in politics now. Doesn't that yes, make I you have a to be. I have to be in politics. That does not make me the Nigerian politics by a politician that you know. That I mean, I'm in politics does not make me the Nigerian politician so, that you know. So what? They should vote for who they don't know. No, the, polit the Nigerian politician that you know is that politician that tell tells lies. No, Dr. Alorin, it's, it's really interesting. That steals, so let, let's, that let's, say, let's say, that for instance, really, that you want to... But you're a politician, just a different... Yes, yes, just, just a different type of... Of Nigerian yeah, it's, it's politician. A different species of politician. Not mm. the Nigerian, you know, the, 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 the Nigerian politician that you know that tells lies, that steal, that, uh, that, that destroy people, that bat with blood in order so to get power. So you're still a Nigerian? Mm. Yeah, I'm a Nigerian. The, I'm a Nigerian of different species. Oh. So you can be, you I'm, can a, I'm a Christian, a born-again Christian for that mm. matter. So if good people have uh, decided to not to join politics, then they shouldn't complain that bad people are destroying this country. So um, uh, uh, in a hospital, you know, there are medical practitioners. And a doctor comes and says, I'm a different kind of doctor. Is he not going to use the same lab? Is he not going to use the same surgery? Mm. Yes, he will clean this laboratory, fumigate it. If the laboratory is polluted. And use the same hospital staff. Well, he will choose his staff. 
and the same hospital. But, yes, that's what they call a consolation. Okay? You will tell them there is a new sheriff in town. Okay? I came to this place not without any single policeman. And that is how I will live my life if I'm a common. I have a house in uh, Apure. You do know that you cannot compel that, right? Well, well they, they can, they, 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 I know they say, they will tell me by, by virtue of protocol. Mm -hmm. But they will have it tough with me in a way. You will break protocol? <laughs> no, not that I will break protocol. They will be there. I will be doing my own. I mean, I, will, I have a house in Apure. I will stay in that, uh, in that house. As governor, eh? As governor. What is it? You will not move to the governor's house. The office is there for me to go and work there and come back to my house. What is it? What, what are we carrying? Ten policemen? Soldiers following you all over the place? Are they not ashamed? Are they going to follow you to heaven? What are we talking? And the country is going down? The, 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 okay, we just, we just ended there. And then governors... But Dr. Olusha Gumimiko <laughs> lived in that house. In the governor's lodge. If, I, if you may know. Was there anything wrong with that? Mimiko doesn't have a house in Akure as we speak. He stays in Ondo. You could leave Akure and go to Ondo every day. No, but, but Even said, now. But he stayed in government house. Well, maybe for official purposes. But you, you would do the same? When I have my house, if I have official thing to do, I will remain in the office. Okay. Uh, office closed at what time? All right. <laughs> Your office may close 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I'll still come to my house. All right, Dr. Ayo, Lauren Femi. You know, live with the people around me. We have to wish you the best. Been... Just quickly, did yeah. he, is he endorsing you? Who? Dr. Dr. Olusha Gomebiko. He has no choice. Okay. Yeah, in the you, spirit. You are endorse. sure of his endorsement? Yes. Okay. In the spirit. If I right. uh, let's um, shock you, uh, if, as soon as I'm living here, I'm also seeing him. Because uh, he's somebody right. that you really can emulate in terms of programs. We wish you all the Plus best. Program. Thank you very as much. As you campaign and go on with thank, all thank of that. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at some messages. There are quite a number, so I don't know. Is this Festus? Well, well, I see this one here. It says, if our lawmakers want us to have a subversion law like the Chinese, they must also enact a law that will prescribe very harsh punishments for politicians and government officials who misappropriate public funds accept bribes and embezzle funds like the Chinese. Simple. Mm. Well, that's Festus's standpoint. Perhaps we can uh, pop up the one that is um, already been, uh, will I say, published now. <laughs> okay, we're seeing this one from Imonoka. It says, this NAS is making laws to test the resolve of Nigerians. This deriding, contemptuous, and taunting the economy is battering tens of millions living under poverty. The rising unemployment, high interest rates is stifling businesses coupled with the hydra-headed inflation. I believe that that tweet continues, but uh, looks like that is all that has been published. All right, the next one here is from Manasse Allen, and he says, if he thinks that obeying and singing the national anthem is important. Why not consult the public as prescribed by the laws? Why bother us with something you think our decisions weren't important in? It should shelve that use of religion to gaslight them mediocrity. Oh, wow. The difference between your politician. All right. Well, there you go. That wraps it up today on Sunrise. And thank you very much indeed for your, your time and your messages. We appreciate them. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain. So goodbye. Well, we've got your questions as well. When next we have another opportunity, perhaps we'll put them through. Thank you so much. I'm Maupe Ogunyusu. Well, tomorrow is Friday. So let me tell my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you know I how I love Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Maki. They do have a wonderful rest of your day.